Hello everyone, this is Jonah from White River Rails, and I'd like to welcome you guys back to another product review. Today we'll be reviewing the new HO Scale Rivet Counter AC4400 CW from Scale Trains. I've got two versions of the locomotive here with me today. One of them is the Union Pacific version and the other being the Ferrocer. The packaging is pretty much the same as you'd expect from any of the other scale trains models. The boxes have the nice graphics on the end showing the locomotive, the name, if it's got sound or not, and then the inside is protected by a nice thick foam wall. And then the only difference in the AC4400's packaging is they've redone the product manual a little bit. It's now a more vertical style instead of the really long horizontal style that they used for most of their engines in the past. One of the features right off the bat that you'll probably notice on these two models is the painted wheels. These come painted from the factory, and this is the feature I'm really excited to see scale trains start implementing onto their locomotive line. This makes it a lot easier for weathering, and then it'll help the paint stick better if you want to change the color of the brown on the wheels rather than trying to paint the fresh factory silver ones. I've been waiting a long time for a highly detailed version of this AC44 to come out with the low number boards from Union Pacific and the low ditch lights. This is one of my favorite versions of Union Pacific AC44s out there. Some of the key parts of this Union Pacific version are the low number boards, the primer painted air conditioning unit under the cab here, and the yellow sill running across the frame. UP7098 is the only low number board AC4400 that Scale Trains has done in the yellow sill. The rest of the ones they did are all red sill versions. And they're also all as delivered, no PTC arrays on any of them yet. Next we'll look at the FerroServe version. This one has a couple different spotting features despite being another low number board unit. This is one of the versions that's got the rock guards over the windows. It's commonly found on a lot of Mexican locomotives. As well as GE's steerable trucks instead of the high ad versions like the Union Pacific has. So I'll go ahead and give a brief overview of the sound decoder, and then after that we'll jump into the lighting. So the prime mover startup button is on F8 like most ESC lock sound decoders, and when F8 is pressed, the number boards, walkway lighting, and truck lights will turn on, if applicable to the model.
Pressing F1 will activate the bell. And then the horn is on F2. Pressing F4 will activate the dynamic brakes. And here's a look at the lighting functions. First we'll start off with the headlight then the ditch lights and when pressing F12 the headlight will dim and the ditch lights will shut off and the number boards then this is the truck light engineer side walkway lighting and the conductor side walkway lighting and then the rear headlight. These locomotives are nice, quiet, smooth runners like the other scale trains engines. Overall, these are nice, highly detailed models. I'm pretty happy with them. Now with that said, there is some complaints I have primarily about this Union Pacific one here. I originally had gotten this model about a month ago, and it worked great out of the box. Seemed like it was running fine. I could read it from my lock programmer. And then so I took it to the club to do some break-in running, and it was running fine for about an hour. And then I noticed the lights were flickering, the headlight off and on a little bit, and then the ditch lights, and I thought that's not normal because the locomotive was sitting still. And it's got ESU's power pack, which is basically a big keep alive, so the light shouldn't be flickering at all. So then I decided just to feel the area right around here where the decoder was and the engine was burning hot to the touch. It was almost hot enough to probably melt the plastic, which I'm glad it didn't. But I went ahead and took the engines off the rails and let it cool back down and then put it back on just to do a little more testing on it and then the lights flashed once and then they shut off for good. The engine was still able to move and it had sound but no more lights and then I took it home and tried to read it on the lock programmer to see if maybe the file corrupted and, and it was unable to read the decoder after many attempts. So I decided to go ahead and email scale trains and they had me just send it in and it got repaired under warranty. They ended up replacing the main board and the decoder. So I'm not entirely sure what happened there. I don't know if the main board was faulty or something. I've talked to a few other people who have had similar problems with some of their AC44s. I think mostly being either UP, CP, or BNSF versions. But the mass amount of people I've talked to haven't had any issues, so I'm thinking it may have just been a fluke thing, and maybe there's a few bad batches here and there, but that's definitely something to look for if you're buying one of these engines. I'd definitely recommend running it for an hour, hour and a half straight, and then keeping an eye on it before you do any weathering, detailing, or anything like that that would void the warranty, because that'd be an expensive replacement if so. As far as these two Ferrocer units go, I haven't had any issues with them yet out of the box. I've probably ran them together for a combined hour on the layout and probably going to do another half hour testing along with the Union Pacific and how it's back from warranty. But so far they've operated fine. They haven't gotten hot or anything, no flickering with the lights. So I'm thinking the Union Pacific which is a fluke thing, but I'm glad to have it back now because that's the one I was most excited about. I definitely plan on getting more eventually. But these two Ferrocer units I have some plans for. They were sent to me by a friend of mine, Nick Taylor. He's having me paint up a couple KCSM Grey Ghosts. So that'll be a pretty cool project. And I'll be sure to include that in a future video when I've got some more progress on those done. And then there was only one more minor complaint that I had. And I've kind of had this issue with some of the other scale trains engines. They've started making the plows really low to the railhead, which gives the engine a little bit of a more prototypical look. But at the same time, if you have any slight elevation change in the track or maybe something in between the rails is sticking up slightly above the rail, the plow's going to hit it and either break off or scrape it up pretty badly, which depending on the engine, they have pretty beat up plows anyways. So on the New Pacific one, I'd already sanded the plow down a little bit just to give it a little bit more clearance. But I noticed on the two Ferrocer units, 
I didn't have any issues with the plows hitting things, so it could vary model to model, but I've had similar issues with the, some of the later run ES44s and Dash 9s from Scale Trains. So I've had to make modifications to the plows every time I get one of those models. There's one last thing I wanted to touch on regarding the Union Pacific version specifically, and this is something a lot of people have been fighting over ever since Scale Trains started doing Union Pacific, but that is the UP Yellow. And there's a lot of people, there's usually one side, it's like the, the yellow's fine, the other side's saying the yellow's terrible. I'm kind of in the middle to where, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the yellow, but it's definitely not a deal breaker for me. And since I usually end up weathering and color correcting a lot of my engines anyways, it doesn't matter too much to me, but if you're modeling something like as delivered, that's a little bit more of important and you don't want to repaint a $300 engine you've already bought. And Scale Trains has addressed this. They've basically come out and said that the yellow does color shift and they're supposedly using the paint chips from Union Pacific. And I went ahead and tested this for myself with a previous one of their ES44s under, under fluorescent lighting and sunlight. It definitely does turn more of the gold color you see in a lot of Union Pacific engines. But while I've got it under LED lighting here on my, in my layout room, it's more of kind of a pale, neon-y looking yellow, depending on the shadows and what angle it looks at. But at the same time, a lot of Union Pacific engines are each, one, each and every one's a different shade of yellow. But on this one here, it's even the faded ones are more of kind of a faded tan goldish rather than a faded neon-y pale yellow. So, so I'm not too happy with the yellow, but I'm going to end up probably color correcting and fading this one down and beating it up pretty good anyways. But while it's not a deal breaker for me, for some others it may be a deal breaker for them, especially if they're modeling as delivered like I mentioned earlier. So I thought it was definitely worth mentioning in this review. But that's about all I had to discuss about these engines in this review. Overall, I'm definitely really happy with them. It's great to have a nicely detailed AC44 on the market now. And Atherin will also be releasing the AC44 in the near future, so I'm probably going to pick up one of those. And I may even do kind of a head-to-head -head video and compare some of the features across manufacturers, scale trains, and Atherin. But anyways, I hope you all have enjoyed. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.